Hello and good morning and welcome to Core Finance. I'm Matt Brown. I'm joined by Ricardo Evangelista, who is Senior Executive Officer at Active Trades. How are you this morning, Ricardo? Morning, Matt. Very well, thank you. Well, thank you very much for coming back onto the show. Um, we're going to talk all things FX with uh, major currency pairs this morning. Um, let's start off with the euro. Um, mm. Certainly, the euro has been going from strength to strength against the US dollar. We've given a, a little bit back of mm -hmm. late in, in recent sessions and uh, we have the ECB policy meetings uh, meeting minutes I should say from September yes. due out later today and um, well Mario Draghi has been indicating that October could be the month yeah. um, for when the QE tapering starts but uh, do you think he can deliver so soon? Um, well it's it's definitely more possible that it will happen say as soon as perhaps uh, in the next few months than one could have thought by this time last year. Mm -hmm. um, however, the, um, the positive performance uh, of the countries within the Eurozone and, uh, and the positive signs coming from there have uh, recently been sort of, um, that sentiment has been somehow capped by some political instability, um, especially coming from Spain mm -hmm. uh, and uh, dispute in Catalonia, so we know that um, there is a there was a referendum there which wasn't really seen as as legal by the Spanish state. So um, the the antagonism between the two parts has um, has raised, uh, especially after the events uh, on Sunday, yes. with the, with the riot police intervening and uh, loads of injured people. Uh, so that is somehow um, putting. Uh, has, has put a has put a sort of a cap on this positive sentiment. Um, so we should look carefully, listen carefully rather, uh, to what is going to be said uh, at the time of the publication of these uh, minutes mm -hmm. and, uh, and take it from there. But um, I would probably agree with some analysts that think that maybe October or November will be too early for the, for the starting of that tapering process on the, on the QE policies. Mm -hmm. And obviously the, we had the German election a few weeks ago, that's mm -hmm. still playing out and, and probably will do for the next few weeks and maybe months. So that, that means overall kind of Euro, um, although it has been strong, maybe a mm -hmm. lot of people now just looking to take some profit off the table yeah, exactly. and, and, and be on the sideline and, and see how it pans out, certainly in Spain and certainly in Germany uh, for the moment. Exactly, exactly. Uh, also we had a very positive um, speech by President Macron. Mm -hmm. uh, of France, where he he, he laid out uh, a vision for a, um, a a Europe, a more federal Europe with uh, with the military, economical, fiscal policies. Um, so that could be seen as a positive sign uh, for Europe. But somehow, that then a few days later, with the results in the German election and the rise of the of the far right, and somehow a loss of political capital by uh, Chancellor Merkel, mm -hmm. uh, especially because of her policy towards refugees, etc. Um, that's also uh, acted as a counterbalance to that positivity that had uh, arisen from President Macron's speech. So the euro is pretty much in the balance. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of elections, it probably leads on quite well to, to Japan and yes. Japanese elections uh, there. And uh, the yen, certainly against the dollar, has, has been in quite a tight range. How do you think that that election will, will pan out and, and what could that potentially mean for the end? Um, I mean, Shinzo Abe is a very able politician and, mm -hmm. and he's very experienced as well. Um, most analysts think, as you know well, think that the chances of him winning another mandate with a, with a qualified majority are quite high. Mm -hmm. um, that will have all sorts of repercussions. Um, also, we cannot forget that um, the election of the of the new uh, for the for the um, for the Japanese central bank mm -hmm. of the new chairman uh, is coming up as well. Uh, so if if uh, Prime Minister Abe remains in power with a solid position, so it's likely that the status quo will be maintained in terms of the monetary policy. Mm -hmm. uh, so the impact wouldn't be that great. But the yen is probably the another. It's probably even more than the euro. Uh, the one that I would say is difficult to price at this moment, mm -hmm. to price all these expectations, because alongside the political calendar that is coming up in the election you mentioned, uh, we also have the status of the currency itself, which is seen as a safe haven. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we saw that at the time of um, the, late, the last peak at the Korean crisis, um, the yen uh, gained a lot in value. So that's sort of simmering at the moment, that crisis, so we don't know, but mm -hmm. at any moment it can start bubbling up again. Um, so, so the yen is very difficult to, to price at the moment, I would say. Understood. And um, speaking of, obviously, you know, continuing the election themes, um, the, the pound, we had um, Theresa May uh, speaking mm. yesterday at the Conservative uh, Party conference, and we, we've seen the pound weaken over recent sessions. It was the strongest performing currency in September out of the G10 mm. currencies, but seems to be giving a, a little bit back. Yes. Well, what's your take on the pound at the moment? Well, there's been some, um, some encouraging voices coming from the Bank of England, uh, signalling that uh, the first interest rise in 10 years may be, may be within our, uh, our sights. Um, so that has encouraged investors to look into the pound as a, as a viable um, instrument. Um, however, things are not that uh, straightforward politically speaking at the mm -hmm. moment. And uh, we saw yesterday at, uh, at the Conservative Party uh, conference, um, it was almost, um, almost uh, a symbol of, the, of this turbulence, the mm -hmm. speech, the, <laughs> the so-awaited speech by, yes. by Theresa May, where uh, all sorts of, uh, um, all sorts of uh, obstacles just kept <laughs> coming up to her. And uh, yes. I think she handled it very well, mm -hmm. considering. Uh, so, so she probably gained some credit there, some brownie points. Um, however, um, it's a clear sign that things, politically, things are not stable. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will also have an impact uh, on the currency. Um, so, obviously having uh, an interest rise in November will uh, support in the pound, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, however, the policies of the Bank of England will, to some extent, be determined by the political stability and also by the political stability in relation to foreign uh, policies, uh, yes. namely the Brexit mm -hmm. negotiations. So I think it's quite an intricate web uh, of uh, factors that needs to be uh, considered. Uh, I wouldn't surprise. I, w I wouldn't be surprised if the um, if the pound was to to suffer because of this. Understood. And finally, well. If we're talking about major currencies, let's look at the US dollar. Um, not a great year for the US dollar, um, devaluing mm. slightly, but uh, it, it has performed fairly well over recent sessions. We had some strong ISM manufacturing data uh, yesterday, and uh, actually the macro prints yes. seem to be quite good. Obviously, we're looking forward to normal farm payrolls tomorrow. Yes. Uh, the sell-off in the US, a little bit of a bounce. Do, do we think it's a downward trend for the US dollar in general or, or potentially we could uh, revisit some of the highs that we have seen over recent years? Um, well, tomorrow's non-farm payrolls, which you mentioned, will be important. Um, so that will, will, uh, will somehow condition the sentiment of the investors. Um, I think everybody is ex expecting at this stage to see what comes up tomorrow. Uh, what is the tone uh, of the of the people that are um, responsible for these decisions when they talk about it? Uh, what is the spirit that they convey across? Mm -hmm. uh, are they positive? Are they not? Um, because everybody is uh, is looking into the possibility of another interest rise. Um, sorry, um, interest rate rise mm -hmm. in the, um, before the end of the year. Um, so. Um, We'll see. We'll see. However, this uh, it's 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 quite likely it, it will happen. But the the sentiment ab about it is also um, conditioned by um, another variable, which is the um, Janet Yellen is um, is leaving mm -hmm. the next year yes. and potentially uh, leaving. Potentially leaving. Exactly. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure yes. she probably will in February. Exactly. But so yes. so so she may be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, so people are looking as well who will replace her. Uh, at the moment, the, the front runner seems to be the governor of the San Francisco Fed, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Powell, uh, who is seen as not being so hawkish. Uh, so that is not an encouraging sign for uh, investors, and it has somehow as well capped the sentiment mm -hmm. um, that would otherwise be more positive with the possibility of a further interest rise and also with, a, with the positive signals coming from the economy. 
Understood. Well, uh, lots to digest there. Great insight. Ricardo, thank you so much for joining us today on Core Finance. My pleasure. Thank you.